A few months back I bought one of these DC circuit breakers off Evil Bay from China and silly me expected it to last. It didn't, it just is dead as a dodo. So I thought we'll take it apart and have a look how it works. This one is rated for 300 amps, like I say, a couple of quid. You got a couple of terminals at the top and bottom, little bolts, and then these rubber little grommets that cover the top just to protect it from dust, I suppose. It latches open and closed, and then they're the reverse side. The plastic is actually quite rigid. It's held together with these like split pins, rivets there, so I'm gonna snip these rivets and have a look inside. So I feel the top's already a bit loose, taking those others out. Let's get see if we can get this little pesky one last one out. Got a bit of a, a rubber seal in between taking off the top. If it'll focus. There we go. So Here's a lovely inside view. It's made up of a bio metallic strip. A square one, so to speak, but yeah, it is a bio metallic strip. I've already had a nosy in here, so I'm cheating a little bit, but didn't want any unexpected surprises. So here's the, the arm that triggers down. The strip is pushed into the contact and then it's triggered up there. And what failed in this was this trigger here had become misaligned. But let's have a look at the biometallic strip. So we'll get this bolt off. So this is made up often of copper and steel. Let's get that arm out of the way because here's the, the fundamental workings of this. So here's the plate. And this has given it. And what happens is, as current's flowing through, it's joining the contact there. And then if it breaches up over 300 amps, the copper will expand faster than the steel, forcing the strip to lean on upwards like that. Very, very simple. But then again, moving parts, and that's what's failed on this. So what do you expect for something that's travelled halfway across the world? Didn't last very long, but it was interesting to open up. 